indeed, uh, ACDC released the latest data uh, last November on both antibiotic use and uh, antibiotic resistance. And we are seeing some uh, positive signs. Uh, for example, there seems to be a halt in the increase of resistance in some types of bacteria. And uh, we also see that uh, resistance to, uh, of Staphylococcus has been decreasing steadily in the last few years. And this decrease is even more uh, impressive in countries with uh, concerted national efforts. However, uh, there are a number of countries in the EU uh, that uh, face uh, still a challenging situation with resistance to even to last line antimicrobials, especially in hospitals, and uh, this seriously limits uh, treatment options. In terms of uh, antibiotic use, uh, we are also uh, seeing that uh, some member states have achieved decreasing use, especially in the community. Uh, however, again, this is not a universal uh, situation, and uh, in, uh, uh, in, the, in a number of countries, uh, we are seeing a worrisome increase in use of last-line antibiotics. Uh, altogether, we are seeing encouraging results, some encouraging signs, uh, which show that it is possible to tackle AMR. However, we, we still have a long way to go. ECDC is actually engaged in a number of uh, activities related to AMR. Uh, first of all, we are uh, doing surveillance of antimicrobial uh, resistance, of antibiotic use and of healthcare associated infections across Europe. We also provide uh, scientific advice in the form of uh, evidence-based guidance and uh, also uh, risk assessments. And we provide training in surveillance and uh, infection control. Uh, ECDC is also organizing country visits uh, that support the member states in the development and implementation of national action plans against AMR. And last but not least, ECDC is uh, uh, coordinating the European uh, Antibiotic Awareness Day uh, each year on the 18th uh, of uh, November. And this is an EU-wide uh, awareness campaign. Uh, ECDC with uh, EAAD, uh, we think, has uh, contributed uh, in increasing awareness in Europe and uh, keeping the issue of AMR high in the political agenda. And we are, uh, it has been really rewarding that uh, EAAD has also served as a model for the development of the World Antibiotic Awareness uh, Week by the World Health Organization. One of the major lessons learned from uh, after 10 years of EAAD uh, is that we need to address uh, different populations uh, that have different needs. And for example, uh, in the last uh, EAAD, uh, there we have uh, focused specifically on hospital uh, professionals uh, with uh, providing a specific toolbox uh, that includes uh, uh, infographics, uh, fact sheets, posters, leaflets uh, that address uh, infection control and appropriate use of antibiotics in the hospital setting. Uh, we have realized that uh, humans, animals and the environment are very closely interrelated in terms of antibiotic resistance. Resistant bacteria can spread from animals to humans and the other way around. And uh, antibiotics are used uh, in both animals and humans and very often are similar or even the same. Uh, so the, uh, this is why we definitely need a multi-sectoral approach that addresses all these uh, different dimensions and uh, this approach will make sure that uh, uh, the different sectors uh, like uh, human health sector, animal health, agricultural and environmental sectors will collaborate to tackle AMR and this is the One Health approach. Uh, there have been many initiatives uh, at the national, international and even global level on AMR uh, but uh, what we need also is a bottom-up approach uh, to make sure that, uh, that policies are really put in practice and that successful policies are put in practice. And this is, uh, uh, I think, where uh, the joint action uh, can provide added value because it brings together uh, actors from uh, the member states and uh, makes sure that they join forces and collaborate, aiming to uh, for example, exchange experiences on best practices or test uh, various uh, measures and eventually support uh, the member states in the development uh, and implementation of uh, policies. 
It's true that there are very few new antibiotics uh, available uh, and, and in the pipeline, especially for uh, the most problematic uh, resistant bacteria. Uh, in the recent years, we have seen uh, a number of uh, innovative incentives to support research and development of antibiotics. And uh, we also have seen efforts to uh, ensure uh, the sustainability of these antibiotics when eventually they may come uh, to the market. However, the effect of these efforts uh, it remains to be seen, actually. And in the meantime, uh, and even when eventually such uh, new antibiotics uh, uh, become available, infection control and uh, the appropriate use of antibiotics is and will remain uh, crucial to prevent further development of resistance.